how to determine the bond order for resonance structures. So bond order, we know that if it's a single bond, it's a one bond order. If it's a double bond, it's a two bond order. But resonance hybrids make that a little different where you end up getting fractional bond orders. So how do you calculate bond order more specifically according to a Vesper theory? Just so you know, bond order in the Vesper theory is different from a bond order in the molecular orbital theory. So the bond order for Vesper theory, which is your diagram, your geometry diagram, is calculated by the electron pairs divided by the bonded atom pairs, or as I like to put it, it's the lines being shared or circulated in the resonance structure divided by how many electrons it's shared over, or aka how many resonance structures there are. So to illustrate this more simply, starting with our first example, which is ozone, O3, bond order. First of all, how many, how many resonance structures are there? There are two resonance structures for ozone. And then how many lines are circulated in the resonance structure? Well, to put it simply, we're going to take a look at this atom. There's two bonds. And here is one more bond. So it's going to be three lines that are circulated in the resonance structure. So the bond order will be 1.5. This is one way you can look at it. You can also look at it, how many lines are being circulated. Well, there are two places that these resonance uh, bonds can be at. One on this oxygen, oxygen one, oxygen two. There are two places that you can distribute these three uh, electrons, these delocalized electrons. But that's a more complicated way to think of it. If you just do the circles, it's more easier. I'll show you with this next example. Bond order. First of all, how many resonance structures are there in our example? Nitrates. Well, there are three drawings possible for this resonance structure, so it's going to be divided by three. And how many lines are being shared or circulated in the resonance structure? We'll take a look at one oxygen. So we'll look at this oxygen throughout all of the resonance structures. And how many electrons pairs, how many electron pairs, or aka one bond, are shared? So we see that there is one, two, and then two more, so that's going to be four total electrons. To sorry, four total lines, four total electron pairs that are being shared throughout this resonance structure. So try this next example, carbonate. Two lines, three lines, four lines. What about the next one? There are two resonance structures, so it's going to be divided by two. And we see that in this last example, the resonance is distributed between the oxygen and the carbon here. It is not here. It does not involve this part. It is only the peripheral oxygen square where the resonance is present. So that would actually look like uh, this, where the resonance is only being shared between these two. Okay, so then we will look at this oxygen. The first diagram oxygen is being shared with two electron pairs and adding with a second diagram its total is three electron pairs being circulated throughout this resonance structure. That's how you find a bond order for resonance structures. And a little note on, on some bond angles. So we know that in a typical Vesper diagram double bonds will affect the angle. For example we have a planar shape 
bonding. So the ideal bond angle and the actual bond angle ends up being 120. But if you have a double bond, this part will be more greater than 120 because of greater repulsive forces. But now, what, it, what about resonance structures? So say the resonance is distributed across all of these three. Is there still a still an effect at double bonds? So for example, you see in our nitrate example here, in just one diagram, you, it, it looks like there's only one double bond. So you, you might be tempted to say, well, one angle is going to be just a little bit greater than 120 and one will be just a little less than 120. But because there are three resonance structures, so the electron is equally delocalized over all three structures, the bond and the bond strength and bond length is the same, it's equally delocalized, which means in fact, there will be no deviations if this were a resonance structure where all three are equally shared. It would just be an ideal 120. So resonance structures in some cases will make angles closer to ideal depending on which, which corners the resonance are happening at. But if you've got a trigonal plan or super common here, just remember that because it's the electrons equally delocalized, the bond angles are exerting are ideal because all three of these bonds are exerting similar equal force on the central atom. Now what about this last example here? What would be the bond angles? So in this example, if we did not know there were a resonance structure, we might say, well, it looks like there's a planar shape and this part might be greater than 120, but, but, but we have two resonance structures, which means the diagram looks like this, where electron is delocalized over these two oxygen atoms. This dashed lines represent delocalized electrons. So because they're delocalized, electrons are, both of these atoms are exerting similar equal force towards this carbon. So what will end up happening is your bond angles, where your resonance is concerned, will be even close, will be very close to 120. Yeah, and that this statement just says the same thing. Now one more question that ex tests might ask you um, about resonance structures and bond orders. It is bond order related to strength of bond. So now they might just give you a compound and a few compounds and say rank them in increasing strength. So when they say rank them in increasing strength, that means you want to find their bond order. And I repeat on purpose, if they ask you rank, rank these compounds, rank these molecules in order of increasing strength. First thing you think about is calculating their bond orders. So bond order is a measure of uh, bond strength. And bond strength, which we can also call the electrostatic force, is proportional to this equation where charge, uh, where there's charge divided by distance. And this relationship shows us that the increased bond order means increasing bond strength, which means decreasing bond length because this part here is inversely proportional. So that means the strongest bond will have the highest bond order and the smallest distance between them, the smallest radius 